Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I hope you have a wonderful day. In today's video, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about investment. Should you hold, nah, buy and hold. <laughs> or flip. Or buy and sell, like just yeah. in a short term. Yeah. Maybe just over a year, like that. So there's different ways of property, I guess, making strategies. Let's it's say. not only property investment like ETF as well, any mm -hmm. kind of investments, I'll say. So the simple concept of it, if it's in a property world, mm. um, you buy a property that is ugly duckling, renovated it, and then sell it, and do the same routine again and again. Repeat and a repeat. And repeat and repeat, yeah. So that is the buy and buy. sell, yeah, or buy, flip. flip. Yeah. yeah, so you buy it, renovate it, and then sell it again. Buy, renovate, sell. The same process over and over again. Um, the other one? Gun. Oh. oh, okay. The, yeah. the other, the other one, one is, is buy and hold. Buy and Very hold. Very traditional so. borrowing method. Yeah, borrowing method. You buy it, hold it for 30 years. Yeah, you buy it, you pay it off and hold it for 30 years. Or plus, or more. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. You don't sell it. You don't sell it at all. You don't want to sell it. You buy the asset forever. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you can pass that down from next generation to the next generation. So, we're having this debate, I think, a few days ago. Because we're thinking, okay, how can we get <coughs> more like a quick, quick income? Cap. Yeah, um, quick and big capital. Yeah, that will be flip, flip, buy and flip. So using um, our vendor finance strategy, or you know, some people they buy it and then renovate, sell it at a higher price. So there was a numbers that we look at on mm. one of the property that I found. Yep. Um, let's say purchase price. We do vendor finance. This is the strategy that mm. we use. Um, you can buy it, let's say put 20% down, uh, it was a $200,000 property. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can flip that and then sell it again at maybe 220000 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and with 10% down, as an example. Um, with that, with the cash flow of that, I don't know what the numbers was. But yeah. at the end of the day, it will be positively good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we don't have to pay for maintenance. Correct. So the, the good... Part of that is you get you do get the cash flow, um, but, but no slowly though, yeah. and you have to wait till they refinance you, mm -hmm. because we we have some uh, current client they're thinking refinance talking about for like I don't know how many years <laughs> but still like not refinancing, <laughs> yeah we okay we should have this cash no we don't we should have this cash oh no we still but yeah. I'm happy to get the cash flow weekly yeah. from them not a big lump lump sum. For us, cash flow is king versus mm. big lump sum. Because mm. with a big lump sum, yes, great, you've got that big lump sum, but at the same time, it's like there's that opportunity of it's gone missing and do other things. Yes. And that might not be working. <laughs> yes, shiny object, right? That's <laughs> you it. You see it, you <laughs> want to buy it. Versus the other option was I can buy this property and don't do rental finance, just do a normal rental. So that's one of our current property in Queensland. Yeah. We have one in there and then we paid it off just under seven years. Yeah. So six, I can't remember. Whatever the number six is. Six years, I think. said under 10 years. Yeah. Um, and we're looking at based on a $200,000 property. Mm. We should be able to pay that off within less than 10 years. Yes. And then just pretty much. Leave uh, it as leave it, it is. As a traditional borrowing, straightforward, no technical <laughs> yep. Tough end. Because we bought it um, quite a long time ago and the price at that time is good. Yep. And now we check again. Mm -hmm. We bought it at $282,000 at that time. It was a Let's three say bedroom. 300 would be around numbers. Makes it okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a three bedroom house with land. I think the land is approximately 600 square yep. meters. Front yard, backyard. Three bedroom, mm. one bathroom, yes. two car garage, yes. your traditional home. We haven't been, but we're going there in a month. <laughs> <laughs> we pay it off, but we haven't actually set foot on it. Nah. Um, and then uh, we checked the market price. Apparently up now is $450,000. But so it's been seven years. It's not doubling the price yet. It's only $150,000 up. Now with that alone, we're looking at, okay, is it worth doing the hassle of mm. buying, selling um, again? Or is it really worth of us just purchasing and 
um, mm -hmm. hold it off yep. over the long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. so that's that's our debate because we're thinking, oh, we should get some more big money, <laughs> but then we have to do. Um, we're, you were thinking to do fund of finance, and I was like, why are we doing fund of finance if we can hold it for long term? That at that time, more we we did fund of finance, it was because we were quite stressed. Yeah, really stressed. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized our, our going, income <laughs> couldn't afford our um, couldn't pay off our in, in interest expenses, the mortgage. Yes. Yeah. So, hmm. and then realize now, oh, rental finance is actually a good strategy that we use. Yes. And we keep on repeating that over and over again. Yes. Up to the stage now, it's like, we don't do any transaction unless it's rental finance. Yeah. So, um, for us, like, okay, there's the other option of buying a car that is for about $70,000. Mm -hmm. I have the option of if I can purchase that using a mortgage, that is. Um, uh, what do you mean using a mortgage? Like, as in putting 20% there. Having the $70,000 uh, yep. uh, fund that we have, yep. instead of buying a car, yep. we can actually buy this property. Yes. But at the same time, we need to, like, let's say, borrow money from yes. the bank with mm. a mortgage. So <laughs> that was the thing. Yeah. That was sort of like the dilemma. Correct. So but we still got to talk to a broker, we got to check out tax taxable income, the tax return, power, um, yeah. Yeah. and all that jazz. So mm -hmm. the, that, that headache of it, and then get a tenant and make sure the tenant doesn't... Break anything, <laughs> but well, tenants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. tenant being tenant. Yeah, so. yeah human. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so uh, overall, we're looking at which one is better off. Yeah, which one is better off? Based I'll, on our knowledge. I'll say it is still based on your uh, situation. Mm -hmm and what you know and what's your strategy are you looking for like a quicker money i'll yeah. say it's flip yeah but flip. then yeah well but then you got your knowledge you should get it more like each time when you do it it should be easier because you know the content you know how to do it you know how to advertise you got your maybe you already have some existing customers because we got few existing customers and they repeat customer correct that so. make it easier but then if you don't want too much hassle you want just don't talk to anyone just go buy and hold buy well yeah. contact the agent um, <clears throat> you know have the property manager to manage it so that's your point of contact correct um, but there's bound to be a risk involved in any of them yeah you know for example if you renovate for a flip and hopefully you make a profit but when you sell it there's a possibility that you're not making a profit correct <laughs> you did the numbers a bit maybe wrong it all <laughs> depends on the market as well apparently now we in the downturn of the property market mm -hmm. some banks they expect um, like 10 percent down next year or something like that so it mm -hmm. all depending on what can you do for us is like yeah. we try to minimize risk mm -hmm. um so if we're to do it probably buy and hold permanently if, hold. if if we can yeah if we don't have to borrow it from the bank buy and hold <laughs> buying it, it in <clears> cash is so. the the risk of you paying the bank interest you have the burden every single week or every month you have to pay that lump sum to the bank yep. but what if no one's renting your place you cannot guarantee someone to to rent you cannot guarantee that it's going to be occupied 100 percent but it's guaranteed that you have to pay for the bank it is a hundred percent guarantee <laughs> yeah. you have to pay that mortgage every month mm -hmm. or every week or whatever cycle that you have so um overall we've done both yeah so is it buy and hold or is it like <coughs> the good thing about buying and hold is like it appreciate in value and in that value is like okay then and the rent can go up mm -hmm. um you know for example in that one property that we have mm -hmm. is like the rent's gone up i don't know three four times as long yeah i think it was 320 and let's say from 300 and then now it's 385 so nearly yes. 400 in mm -hmm. over period of six or seven six, years six, yeah, yeah and a portion of that goes to the bank and a portion of that goes to us a portion now, of that used to go to the bank like a big lump sum like well i guess 80 percent of it yeah, yeah. or if not no 110 percent of it let's say yeah we only pay five percent <laughs> for that initially mm. but and then i ended up you know to get rid of that mortgage as quickly as possible mm. but now it's 100 percent of the rent goes to us minus the agent, agent fee fees. And admin costs. And insurance and counsel and what? <laughs> That's what I meant by admin costs. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, like there's, there's, 
the good side of it, it goes up in value, the rent mm -hmm. goes up. Correct. But the bad side is, it's a long term. You it's go. very long. It, yeah. It's yeah, you have to like be patient. Yeah. We, we were choking at that time, so we had to choose the vendor finance and giving us we this lifestyle yeah. now. We over leverage ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> the bank said, hey, here's the maximum you can borrow. I'll Let's take do all it. that. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, we'll give you another more. Okay, I'll take it. And I'm like, mm, now I'm drowning. Uh -huh. I did not know I was drowning, <clears throat> drowning <laughs> until, for whatever reason, I cannot go stop working. Yeah. Oh, this is the reason. Yeah. So um, that's just our two cents, guys. Uh, is, it, is it a flip? Yeah. Or. Um, like buy and hold. Buy and hold. Yeah. It's based on what you need in your situation and what you are comfortable and you have to understand the risk involved. But what would you choose? If I can do it, buy and hold without mortgage, of course. Okay. Without mortgage. Without mortgage. Yes. Would you do a flip? Uh, like a like full on you know renovation. No, I'm 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 not that kind of person. I don't think I can do it. No. No, I don't think I can do it. So would you do the vendor financing? Vendor finance, uh, if I have the money, no. <laughs> <laughs> if I need the money, yes. <laughs> yeah, true. Yes, it's if I need the money. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, I would do vendor finance. So, anyway, that's just our two cents, guys. Um, this is based on, I guess, our, our experience. Yeah. Because it's all personal experience <laughs> that happened. To us. <laughs> yes. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe. Comment. See you next time. Bye. Bye.